Welcome everyone to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And this is part three of a very fun build for this candy machine. Yeah, so uh, you can see over the last two shows, this is as far as we've gotten. We've done a lot of flat routing of plywood. We did some routing of plastics, acrylic specifically, uh, on our last show. And today we're bringing it all together with a couple more parts uh Pretty lightweight stuff that we need to cut, though, on Workstation. Yep. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a conceptual leap, but I think we've prepared you all for this with the fundamentals. Uh, it's going to be kind of light on cutting today, but we are going to hit some of the more heady conceptual stuff, like gridding, mm -hmm. like repeatable vertical work holding, and how to do small parts and even return to small parts after you've maybe cut some features of them. Uh, maybe you want to come back and add a couple features, which is what we're going to show today. Yeah, uh, we're also going to touch a little bit more on studio and show off a couple of cool features that we didn't touch on last show. Yeah, okay, and very important. So we're trying to bring the energy up for this one. <laughs> okay, this is our 100th session. So we wanted to thank you all so much for just coming on this journey with us. We spent some time today and watched some of the earlier shows. Man. Anyone that uh, really sat through that sound quality, the camera quality, good on you. Uh, hopefully it's gotten a lot better over the years. And you can see a big transformation in Jake's hairstyles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it's our 100th session. Um, to celebrate, we're doing a really big giveaway for our live viewers today. We're giving away five trace kits at the end of the show. We always do this giveaway with our Q&A section. Uh, so my request for you all today is just, you know... Let's pad this out a little bit. We don't want to give away five back to back. That would be pretty right. fun, actually, if we did. But we want questions. Okay, that that's what spinning. I'm asking for. We want questions. Type those questions into the chat on your computer or on your phone, however you're watching this. Ted's going to send those questions to us at the end of the show, and we're going to answer those live, and we're going to sprinkle those five trace giveaways um, in between. If you're, I mean, if you're so far out of the loop, what the heck is Trace? We've got one right behind us. This is Trace. Um, if you're new to making digital files for digital fabrication, like with Origin, like for a laser cutter, like for a vinyl cutter, all this stuff, um, Trace lets you go from just a sketch, like a hand-drawn sketch, to a digital cut file, a vector file, in seconds. Yep. Pretty fun. Very fun. Very fast. Very fast. Uh, and if you want to see that in action, we've done a bunch of shows on that in the past. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, how do I enter the giveaway? That's with the poll question that's going to come up about halfway through the show. We're going to do our mid-show announcements. You're going to have some time to answer this poll question. Um, and the poll question this week, you can mull it over in advance. We're considering starting a referrals program and so the question is if we were to offer a referrals program what would you expect for referring a friend to shaper so think about that and we'll pop that poll question up halfway through the show for our live viewers cool should we just get started let's get into it okay so here's what we're doing today we have this small piece here we have this big piece here all we need to do is add holes for the magnets. Let's show that off on the big candy machine that we've got finished from the other day. So mm. in come the top, overhead. yeah, overhead's perfect. In the top, we've got these magnets. They hold the lid on. You might think, hey, why didn't you guys cut the magnets into this lid portion when we were doing all that flat work? Simple answer, we forgot. <laughs> and I'm sure you forget things, too, sometimes in the shop. So we're going to show you how to come back to something that you've already cut and use grid to realign that work um, and basically add these features that we're missing. Yep. And then in the top of this piece, Jake spent the time to assemble this. We're going to talk about assembly of the whole project at the end of the show. But Jake took the time to glue this all up um, earlier today. And we need to cut those magnet holes in the top of this which is something that you must do vertically on workstation. So we're going to talk about workstation, grid, small parts work holding, vertical work holding, um, and how to get kind of repeatable results with those things. Yep. Which is applicable to, sorry, I'm going to ramble just a little bit longer. That's okay. Applicable to like really fancy stuff like these tenons. Okay. Yeah. So that's the whole picture. Should we? Let's do it. Okay. In the First studio. Step, yeah, in the studio. Um, 
So this is a bit of a rehash from last time, but I want to drive this home. You'll remember last time we talked about cutting this acrylic material to size on the table saw first, and then using grid, breaking out that design in studio, and using grid to drop that design exactly on the material that was already the correct size to begin with. We kind of did that with this piece. Now, we didn't cut this on the table saw. We cut this with Origin, flat, out of plywood. But we want to do the same thing. We want to break this file out of the whole project on Studio. We want to send it over to Origin. And um, then we're going to be able to cut this, right? Yep. So we've got Studio queued up on the computer here. You know, the one thing that I didn't check, Jake, before the show... That was this last little thing that gets me is make sure that we are signed into the same account. Should be on my account over there, which we are not. Okay, I can sign into that in a second. Um, but first, we're going to go over here into Studio, and we will import uh, a file to start. So Studio, our simplified design tool for craftspeople. Um, you've got a couple ways to bring designs in. If we have a design that we're already working on, like this candy machine, and we want to modify it, we're going to use this File Import button over here on the bottom left. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to bring this in from My Files. You can also upload files from your computer, uh, but this is a Shaper Hub project, so it's going to come through My Files. Click that. And this is already in this folder because I was messing around with this earlier. But if you go back, you will see my entire my files folder in here and we've got all kinds of projects we've got studio projects those are the ones with the square and the dotted circle here and okay. i can go down to find this candy machine folder right here this is that shaper hub project when you sync a project it's going to go into a folder like this and then i can click on candy machine.svg and import now for this, I want to import all of these pieces as if they were disconnected from each other. So I'm going to use this exploded button here. Place all those 142 objects. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here. Um, and now here's something that we forgot to mention last show, and we got an email about this from a viewer. We selected a bunch of these parts just to delete them really quickly and easily because the only one that we want left this time is this part over here on the far right, this uh, top with the magnet holes. But we neglected to show how we did that select all. It looks like a click and drag, right? Mm -hmm. But the trick is, it's a click and hold and then drag. See how I held that in place for just a second or so? Click and hold and then drag. If you just click and drag quickly, that's pan. That's going to move this stuff around the screen to select multiple things. Click, then hold. That little plus button shows up, and drag. Get rid of those, because all I want left is this piece. Click, and hold, and drag. OK, nice. Now we've got this lid. And I think this is the orientation that we wanted, isn't it, Jake? Uh, because the this is going to be the top of this candy machine, right? And we want this face to be up against the clamping face of workstation, mm -hmm. right? So we'll keep it this way. Um, the last thing that we're going to add to this, just to make aligning this to the grid a little bit easier, is we're going to use the custom anchor function. And this is something that I think we didn't do last time. Maybe we did. Um, but to turn that on, you're going to use this drop down in design right here, which is where we are. We're in this design tab. Use this drop down. Add origin anchor. Okay, and you can't see that coming on on the screen because I'm away from the zero, zero origin point. So let me zoom out here. We'll see if this pops up. Here's the center of that coordinate system. There you go. So you see that custom anchor point comes in right there. Um, and we want that to be at, I'm going to say the top right corner of this because we're going to align to the right most alignment pins when we do the full tower of this candy machine. Um, we have snap to grid turned on, so I'm going to select all of this again and then just drag it around. We can see it snapping to that grid, and I'm just going to snap it right there to zero, zero on that corner. And so what that custom anchor point means is when we bring this design into Origin, it's going to 
grab that anchor point first. You still have the option to choose any of the other anchor points on this part, but it's going to grab that custom anchor point first, which, especially, which is especially handy for times when the custom anchor point's in a weird spot, like not a corner necessarily, right? I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm talking too much. Feel free to cut me in off the zone. at any time. Okay. Um, I got the flow, Jake. Yeah. So one last thing I want to mention here is we've got these two circles. Um, we don't know what size these are. The nice thing about Studio is that it's really easy to just click on these and see that these are 0 0.481 inches in diameter. Um, I could change this on here. You know, we talked about doing this two ways before the show. We talked about doing this by changing it in Studio, or we talked about doing it with offsets mm -hmm. on Origin. Uh, why don't we do one of each? Is that going to be too confusing? No. Yeah, let's do one of each. Uh, so, all right. Remember this. I'm going to keep this uh, circle as 0 0.481. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the way to do it. Okay. We do the lid with the circles at 0.5. We change them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and change them back because we're going to need to realign this for the tower. Right. And we'll do that with offsets because that's a little bit more complicated. Right. Right. So we're going to level it up. But a nice skill to have to be able to do on the fly. Nice skill to be able to do on the fly. So over here, uh, to modify this, what I'm going to do is, back to the computer if you would, Goose, thanks. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have the center anchor point selected because that's where the change is going to originate from. I want this to grow from the center. Right? Okay. So let's, we can stick on the computer here for a while. Um, I can just resize that over here. So these are linked together, these two dimensions. That's what this little chain icon does. Uh, so when I change one, it's going to change both. I'm going to change that to 0.5. You can see that got just a little bit bigger. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to do this at 0.5. That just got a little bit bigger. And now that should be good for our magnets. Yep. You know, I'm even going to say let's do 0.505. Because we're going to glue these in. They don't need to be like tenon perfect uh, press fit, you know? We're going to totally. glue these in. Let's give them a little bit of wiggle room. 0. 0.505. Okay, now there's a part. Um, it's titled Magnets. Everything that you do on Studio automatically synchronizes to your shaper files. Uh, and so that's going to pop up on Origin over here. And now, Goose, uh, I'm going to type in my password here, so... High security, okay. Uh, top secret. Password is password. <laughs> it's not. Don't tell IT. Okay, nice. We're in. Thanks, cool. Jake, for queuing that up. No problem. And just to make sure that it is exactly where we thought it was. Should bam. be right there. Magnets. And you can even see the little red triangle, which is that custom anchor point. Nice. So let's go ahead and get set up for the cut. Okay, so while Jake's doing this little overview, Workstation is our ultimate fixturing solution. Uh, we use it a lot for small parts and for vertical parts. Uh, for small parts, we use the shelf. So the shelf slides into those T-slots there. It's got this handle in the front that locks it in place. Um, and then we just use double-sided tape to tape things to the top of the shelf. We use the support bar then to align the height of that part with the top of workstation. Beautiful. So take this theory here, this whole pro process, and apply it to any odd-shaped material, or odd thickness material, especially when you get down to that really thin stuff for inlays, eighth-inch stock that you've resawn. Mm -hmm. This makes that an absolute dream. A hundred percent. This is as opposed to setting up with like a huge sheet of plywood or like a huge sheet of like perfect thickness material for what we call the tape board method. Right. right. Like we did in previous shows. Early days, I used to plane all my material to the thickness of whatever plywood we had around. That sounds horrendous. <laughs> it was really annoying. That sounds horrendous. All right. I'm using a little double-sided tape. Probably too much for this application, but that's okay. Yeah, just a little bit works. And for this one, I would say we could slap this down at just like 
anywhere at any angle. We're not being precious about this because we're coming back to the part. We're using this grid to align to the part wherever we place it. Um, and in the second half, when we do the vertical fixturing, we will like very um, carefully align to the locating features on workstation itself. Yeah. I just naturally want to put it against the clamping face. But maybe, Which we could do also. But maybe to prove the point, we'll put it slightly askew. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's fun. Because this uh, exaggeration really drives home how grid works, I think. Yeah. And we're going to do everything by the books today. Because we always do things by the books. Oh, yeah, always. Uh, and we're going to use the probe, which is the back side of the engraving bit, to create our grid. I will say, though, I do love books. <laughs> uh, just to show that again. Back side of the engraving bit, pointy side in, gives us a perfect... 0 0.25 probe. And let's scan it in. Yeah, so we've done this a couple of times. Um, go to that scan mode. We work from scan to design to cut. Scan's always where you start. Um, unless you're working with plate or something, that's a bit more of an advanced topic where you have reusable workspaces. But when in doubt, new scan. Um, and that gives you a nice image of the piece that you're working on. So Jake just took a bunch of pictures, origin, crammed them all together, added them all together into one big picture, and now we can see this piece of wood that we're working on if you zoom out. There you go. You see there it's it slightly askew. And go into that grid, new grid. Double check that it knows I have a 0.25 inch bit. And I'm gonna hold that green button to drop my bit down. Set depth. If I zoom out here, you can see I'm actually tucked behind the piece because I'm going to do a backside grid. Need to change my edge. You can see that dotted line now shows the side of the probe that we're using. Mm -hmm. Click one, click two, and I actually need to go up and over here. Yep. On the right hand side because that's where our custom anchor point is. Exactly. And click three. Yeah, the reason for this being that we want that zero, zero point of the grid, that point where the X and Y axes intersect, to be the same corner that we put that custom anchor point, just for ease of placement. Yeah. Cool. I actually like this. I mean, I should say, for any perfectionists out there, it's probably driving you crazy that it's slightly askewed, uh, just to drive the point home. It doesn't matter, but our grid is locked to our part. Mm -hmm. So we can go ahead and import. Magnet and snap it right to zero zero. Nice. And we already went in and modified those circle diameters in studio. So it should be just as easy as dropping a quarter inch router bit in origin and doing a quick helix on those parts. What's our depth for those magnets? Eighth inch. I bought eighth inch magnets. Nice. Yep. Okay, new bit in there. First thing we have to do is make sure that the bit size is correct and we need to Z-touch. Especially on workstation, I like to touch off, if possible, I like to touch off directly on the piece that we're cutting. Mm -hmm. um, change our depth to an eighth of an inch. And our offset. We're going so shallow, I'm just going to go to zero. Perfect. Ah, these are pockets. I mm. can change those to an inside. Mm -hmm. And I could have changed that in studio, but mm -hmm. you don't get them all. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you miss one. Didn't realize that. Uh, on the next one, we'll go through uh, plan and review. Cool. Cool. Well, this is going to be quick. This is going to be quick, everyone.
Sweet. There we go. Need and a my... brush? Thank you. I have my little sanding stick handy, but... Yeah, brush works pretty good. Now we've got these little magnets. Careful, they're strong. They come in these little plastic containers so they don't uh, pinch too much. How's that fit? That is going to be perfect. I don't want to yeah, push. Yeah, it's a little tight, actually. Eh. But it'll go in. It'll go in. Okay. Magnets must be a little oversized. Okay. Before we do that, or should I go ahead and press them in? Um, Let's wait until we, we get the polar right. polarities right. Wait until we get all the parts. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Pry this up. I mean, that's really it, huh? There, there you go. we go. And you can see that even though that part was placed at an angle, the circles are perfectly square with each other, and that's the beauty of grid. It lets you return to your work, kind of no matter the orientation, um, and you can pick up right where you left off. <laughs> cool. Uh, and that's part one. Let's see. I'm looking over at my list here. Do we miss anything? I think not. So, time for some announcements. Nice. Okay. Um Great. Reminder, it's our 100th show. We're giving away five trace kits to celebrate. Uh, to enter that giveaway, you are going to answer the poll question. And Goose is going to pull up the poll question right now. That poll question is uh, something like, we're considering starting a referrals campaign. And if you were to participate in this referral campaign, refer your friends to Shaper, what would you expect out of that? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. What's a fair kickback to you? Yeah, a fair kickback. <laughs> I like that phrasing. <laughs> um, okay, so we got that going on. We've got, okay, a whole bunch of announcements today. And I've got all kinds of stuff to show you on my computer that is relevant to this. Uh, first thing is this week and this week only, we have a 15% off accessories sale. Yep. Um, so that's all your bits, all your tape. Uh, yeah, uh, basically everything but plate and workstation. I think it's all of the... Yeah. Uh, but we've got calipers in here. Um, Edge mortising adapter. And yeah, that sustainers, was... tapes, hoses, collets, and more. Discount applied at checkout. And if we scroll down, here's the thing. This is fun. This is new. We just launched a new little product. <laughs> Shaper branded clearing brushes. Let's pop yeah. back over. Let's pop back over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at those. We've been using these on Sessions for years. This yes. is a Sessions product, basically. This is a Sessions fan request. Um, everybody asks, hey, where do you guys get these brushes? So we thought, yeah, we should probably sell those. And we can show these off on the Origin Cam or something. They are great. Um, they're the perfect stiffness to clean up your work without harming your wood. And on the other side, they have this nice little laser engraved Shaper logo. It's yeah. pretty slick. They come in packs of two. So pick some up for you and your friends. Yeah. Absolute must. When Four it comes out to of grade. five dentists recommend <laughs> the Shaper Clearing Brush. Uh, yeah, don't, don't tell that to an actual dentist. <laughs> All right. We got the accessory sale. We got the clearing brushes. We've got the box challenge. Still going till the end of the month. The box challenge is running from now through February 29th, and I've got a web page for that as well. That's shapertools.com slash box challenge. Um, how to enter. Love this. Uh, post some photos or a video to Instagram, preferably with the hashtag shaperboxchallenge. And if you want us to repost your project, which we love to do, tag us at shapertools. Um, that helps us see what you've been working on so that we can share that and get you a little exposure. Um, what are the prizes? First prize is going to be $1,000 to the Shaper store. Second prize is going to be a Festool CT MIDI dust extractor. And third prize is going to be a cool little package of Bessie clamps. Yeah, and I would be so jazzed to win any of that stuff. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> um, so make sure you get your entries in. Um, entries are judged on design, craftsmanship, and documentation. What does that yeah. mean? Design. Is your design unique? Does it serve a specific need in a really interesting way? Like, uh, I think our winner last year was a wedding ring box. It was. Right? It was um, and it was, like, so sentimentally well-designed. Like, the materials were from this person's, um, like, childhood 
forest, which <laughs> not to say I'm making this sound like uh, the bar is so high, right? But just, you know, put some thought into these things, and it's <laughs> incredible just how far a little bit of thought on that design will get you. Craftsmanship is the thing well made. And then documentation. Like, we love to see, like, good, either thorough documentation or beautiful photographs. Just, like, spend a little bit of extra time yeah. putting some thought into how you present this thing. Yep. And then we're going to announce the winners on sessions... Originally, we had said March 7th, but I think we're going to push that to March 21st because we've been getting we've been getting a lot of submissions, so it's yeah. going to take some time to judge. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Which is fun. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, I will be at the Kitchen and Bath Show in Las Vegas next week. So if you will also be at the Kitchen and Bath Show at Las Vegas next, next week, come visit me at the Sugatsuni uh, booth. Sugatsuni is a manufacturer of all kinds of incredible hardware, hinges, hooks, etc. All kinds of architectural stuff, basically any hardware that you would need to build a house. <laughs> um, we have been loving the hardware catalog plus plate for hardware installations. And my coworker Ben and I will be doing demonstrations of just that. All different kinds of hardware installations. So yeah. if you're there, come see us. We just also released a brand new hardware catalog update kind of to support this. Uh, the two new things are, I mean, first off, we've got the Festool Dominoes in there, which is really cool. And then we've got 30 pieces of Sugatsuni hardware that are great to install with Origin. Check this out at shapertools.com slash hardware. And, you know, if you've ever wondered, like, what's the best way to install a domino in the middle of a panel? Origin is actually like a real wizard at doing stuff like that. It can be really hard to align your domino sheet machine in certain ways, and Origin can be really good with that. So use these pre-baked files to install dominoes with Origin. And then we've got all this Sugatsuni hardware that we just added. And my favorite are some of these recessed hooks. So these hooks fit in cool um, kind of uh, mortised pockets, right? Mortised pockets with Origin. And a lot of these are soft close, just like the details of these hinges. They're retractable, soft close hooks. I was dreaming of like a cabin build out or like a tiny house where you've got this compact space. Check out their Everything's hooks. flush. Check out or their boats, stuff. Boat building. Boats. Yeah, yeah, boats is a big one. Okay, that was a lot of announcements. Cool. More than usual. That's um, all right. We, of course, have a shop tour for today. Thanks to John. And uh, let's go check out your shop. Let's roll the tape. <laughs> Hello, this is John, and welcome to my shop. I've got a basement shop, and I'm fortunate to have quite a bit of room and a tall ceiling, and, and I kind of divide it in two areas. This is the outer area that I tried to keep the dust out of. Got a little bit of metalworking equipment here, an old wood band, so I converted to metal, and a six-inch metal lathe that I got from my dad, some storage area. Um, got a large table that I made from an old drafting board top um, that I use for layouts, clamping stuff like that even has a shaper trace that i just unboxed but i haven't had a chance to play with i also have a craft table over here that i use for resins and epoxy clay work that i do and then some wood storage here for the flat lumber coming into the more um, dusty area here i've got a miter saw on a stand this is a bosch that i just recently got six inch joiner got a Grizzly cabinet saw, a Grizzly uh, belt sander. I've actually been mostly a wood turner for most of my life. And so this is like a two lays. This is a small Jet 1014 that I use for, for little things. And then this corner of the shop is what I've devoted for the shaper. I've got a plate and a workstation and a table I built. I've got dust collection from a Festool dust extractor and I've kind of routed that up to the ceiling so that I can have the hose coming down and it's not dragging it out of the way. I mounted the workstation on a old Black & Decker workmate so that I can take it and move it if I need to. And then I built this table to do the larger pieces including a spoil board that I put some inserts and set screws in to be able to adjust the height. I had to Put the table in riser just because to get it up to a more comfortable height. 
Over here in the corner is my dust collection for the larger machines with the Cyclone. And then coming into this area is my larger lathe, which is a, a jet. And I've got a bowl in here that I'm turning right now that I inlaid with some patterns using the shaper. And if you're a wood lathe person, you need to sharpen tools all the time. So this is my grinder station. I've got a high speed and low speed grinder. And then I've got in here in the middle of the floor, I've got a kind of generic uh, workbench with woodworking, metalworking vices. And I've kind of set that up also. I sometimes do rotary power carving with my lathe stuff. So I've got a Fordham rotary carver and a micromotor. Over here on the wall is really kind of just tool storage, some scrap wood storage. And then the last area here is um, old drill press that just keeps going and a 75 year old scroll saw from my grandfather. Got a Delta planer, spindle sander, and then a, a Delta bandsaw. So blessed to have a lot of space and can do multiple projects at the same time. So thank you much, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I'm going to need to go back and watch that again to see that workstation set up in more detail. The mm -hmm. workstation set up and that tape board. I like the overhead slick. dust. That is... I thought you would have liked the lathes. Oh, of course I like the lathes. Jake's a lathe man. <laughs> nice. All right. Cool. Thank so, you for saying that, John. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and if you have a shop tour that you would like to have played on our show, send that to us at sessions at shapertools.com. Um, and we send a little something nice in appreciation to everyone whose uh, tour we play. And I think we have like five in the queue right now. So basically, <laughs> if you send us a video, we're going to play it. It might take a couple of months. But uh, yeah, we would love to see everybody shop. And obviously, we love sharing them. So thanks for that. And keep on sending those shop tours. Should we slide into the next part? Let's do it. We got to put okay. the mating holes in the top. Yep. Of the body of this thing. Now, I want to show off one thing on studio here because we had talked about in this segment, we're going to do this offset style. We're going to leave these holes as they were, as if we couldn't have changed them, which we could, but this is a cool offset introduction here. So let's pop over to studio here, which is uh, where I was working before. And you can see that these diameters are exactly what they were 0 0.505. This is what I set them to. Now, the cool thing about Studio, I was going to change these back, but I remembered, you know, we've got this undo button here. So I'm just going to undo and watch the magic happen. I think it should take like maybe four or five of these. So click, change that back to 0 0.50, right? We're changing the other circle now. Click a couple more times, 0.481. Yeah, that's great. Oh, a little too far. We want to bring that back to the custom anchor point. So we've got this one back at 0 0.481. Got this one at 0 0.481. So when we do this on Origin, we're aiming for a little over a half inch. Right now we're at a little over 0 0.48 inches. So to change that diameter, we need to add about uh, 0 0.01 inches on the radius of the circle. So that's going to be about a negative 0 0.01 inch offset. Because if you remember, positive offsets leave more material, negative offsets remove more material. So when you're doing an inside cut, that negative 0.01 is going to take us from 0.48 about to 0.5. And I would even go a little bit bigger than that because these magnets were tight. So maybe okay. we say minus 0 0.015. Perfect. What do you think about that? I think that's going to be great. Okay, I'm going to keep that locked away in here. You got the setup going over here. All right, so with the back of the candy box or candy dispenser, it's going against the clamping face. That's our reference point there. And I have my vertical alignment pins extended right here. We're going square against that. Mm -hmm. And now this is why we put that custom anchor point in that back right corner. Because when we grid repeatably, we want to grid relative to the surfaces that aren't going to move. And those surfaces on workstation are that back clamping face, the reference pins. Yep. If we had gridded uh, according to the front of the piece, the piece that was uh, the side that was away from the clamping face, that thickness might change. And as you're putting multiple pieces in workstation, if that thickness is changing, 
then your custom anchor point is going to be in the wrong place or your grid is going to be in the wrong place because that thickness has changed. So yep. we want to reference surfaces that are not moving. So I got two of my clamps in here. My support board back in its zeroing position. And these are just the clamps that come with workstation. Um, we also like to occasionally use um, like F-style track saw style clamps, which fit in these T-slots as well. Yeah, and those actually might even be kind of a better clamp for this application, but this is working just fine. Yeah, nice. Sweet. Put that back in its original home. And everything's nice and flush. Cool. And like I said before, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, we're going to have a little bit of extra time for questions on this show today. So it can be questions relative to this setup with Workstation. It could be questions that you've had that you've been just kind of kicking around for a while that might have to do with the project that you've been working on. So make sure to ask those questions in the chat and Ted will send those to us to answer while we do this big giveaway. Nice. All right, cool. I'm jumping ahead. I went ahead and did a scan. Okay. I, I like. think we all remember scanning from the last couple of shows. Yeah. Swapping back to the quarter inch shank of the engraving bit. And going to grit. Nice. So here I see the top of my part. Grid. New grid. And I'm going to drop it down over here. So here's the fun part. This piece is actually clamped up against our clamping face. So I don't need to touch off on the part. I can actually touch off or probe rather mm -hmm. against the clamping face itself. It's the same, the same surface. Same surface. So one, tip it up, bring it over. Two, the only thing I need to do because I'm between point one and two, it assumes I want the middle, that dotted line is down the middle. I need to change that by hitting the edge button. And there we go. Sweet. And that looks very similar to the setup that we did on the shelf. Totally. Right. So importing should look very similar as well. Now, the reason that I wanted to do this is because I wanted to show that Studio is always synchronizing with Origin. So if you update something on Studio, Jake's re-importing this file. That new file is just synced right to Origin, ready to go. Yep. And this is going to be with those 0.48 inch holes that we'll use the offset with. Sweet. Swap back to my other cutter. And again, Z touch. Even though I haven't re Z touched and that's still the same bit, always good practice to Z touch. And I like to Z touch directly on the thing that it is that we're cutting. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So we were talking about a negative 0 0.015. Nice. Yes, exactly. Okay. It's hard to see, but you can actually see that the darker gray area now surpasses the green line. Okay. Do Sweet. this real quick. I'm gonna adjust my speeds. There we go. There we go. Give that a quick test. Oh yeah, that Perfect. looks good. Nailed it. Sweet. Time to glue them in. Now the beauty of this is that if you are making, I mean, 
five candy machines or something. At this point, you could take this part out, you could put a new part that hadn't been cut in, and since you have those locating faces and reference pins um, gridded off of, those new parts are going to be in exactly the same place every time. So um, just as we're, since we're on workstation here, I wanted to give this as an example. Like uh, this is a chair part for the Caleb James stacking CJ3 chair. Um, and we did a session on that and his work with him last year sometime. Definitely mm -hmm. go back in the archives and check that out. But that chair has a lot of duplicate parts, multiples. So you can see these two tenons, if they're stacked on top of each other, they are the exact same file in the exact same place on the exact same size stock. So if we were to set these up, we would set up one exactly as Jake described right there, set up against those three reference surfaces. We cut the one and then we swap it out for number two. And it's ready to cut right there. This is a great example of that. The stock chair, which is another um, premium project that we have on Shaper Hub, is also, they're actually all the same tenon throughout the entire thing. So it mm -hmm. just is, talk about really driving home the idea of re repetition and re getting your reference faces correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So check those out. If you want more practice, once you're ready to grow beyond this, and we have shows on both of those that you can check out. Um, cool. I mean, looking over to the uh, list, I think all that's left to do is assemble this thing. What do you say? We got to glue these magnets in. These are very I strong have... magnets. Did I go a little overboard <laughs> on those? Okay. So, um, let's see. We've got accelerator. We've got a little bit of super glue over here. Um, what do you say just for safety's sake? I think we should do the super glue last. Maybe we screw on the acrylic sure. first. Okay. These are number four screws. Just little guys. It's probably, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and we can do the overhead cam for this. It is important to put this uh, little turning part in first, right? That little catch. And how did you assemble the rest of this, Jake? It was wood glue. Wood glue and this really newfangled technology uh, called nails. Ah, uh, nails, yeah. Specifically from a nail gun. I think the nail gun is my second favorite tool after Origin in the shop. Yeah. There's something really fun and satisfying about it. And I only say second favorite because it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> something so satisfying about uh, about a nail gun. Yeah. So, But yes, I, I what I did is I held it up, put a little bit of glue, held everything up on a flat surface to help align my edges on the bottom and popped in a couple of nails, flipped it, did the same. And then if you look, these middle, this middle part, that kind of U-shaped part that's sandwiched between the front and back, has a pretty large chamfer on it. And I just did that on the router table. Nice. With a 45 degree. Sweet. We do have a question in the Q&A that's coming up about chamfers specifically. So we'll talk a little bit about that and how you would do chamfers with Origin. We can touch on that for sure. Excellent. Yeah, nice. I'm just gonna sit here and watch me. Yeah, well, I kind of wanna. I want you to put it on screw mode so it does the beep boop. Oh yeah. <laughs> Turn it down to uh, like five or something. Beep boop. That's the one thing about these festivals. It's like, uh, you know, I love the washing machines these days that do a little jingle at the end. It's like the <laughs> drill like does. I love that. It's so welcoming. It's so homey. It's like the drill does a little jingle when the screw's done. Hmm. Still a little tight, huh? Haha, <laughs> there we go. It's just how you know that it's done. <laughs> All right. And don't worry, everyone. After the show, I will come back and I'll clock all these screws to make sure that they're square. I can't believe that you did that for the first one. <laughs> can't believe it. Okay. So this is now captive in there. Mm-hmm. We have our knob with a little three-eighths Three-eighths inch dowel. Yeah. Bam. Put that on there. Nice. With a little wood glue. A little wood glue on there. Probably should put a little wood glue on that. Or we can put a little super glue on a that. A little super glue. That'd be fine. Uh, 
Nice. Beautiful. Give that a second to think about itself. And now the magnets. Now the magnets, okay, this is important. Magnets have polarity. You want a lid that stays together. You don't want a lid that forces itself apart, okay? So you got to think about that polarity. Um, and the way that I like to do it is to make a matching pair of magnets, put one side in, and then kind of separate the magnets and... Whoa! Okay. Might be a little spicy on this one to do this but technique. I'm doing exactly what Oh, you're what you doing said. with the plastic thing. I'll yeah. just keep the plastics on. Mm -hmm. um, if you can see this, maybe down here. One magnet is bare, one still on its case, and I'm going to use these two to glue them in and then slide off the plastic magnet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that should keep my polarity. Nice. Little bit of accelerator in there, and we're going to put the glue on the magnet itself, right? Yeah. So that when it hits that accelerator, then it cures instantly. Um, if you're trying this at home, we strongly recommend rubber gloves. It's a good idea. It's enough for the magnets to stick to themselves. They don't need to stick to you two. You just slide that off. Perfect. Oh, gosh. Ha! Uh, and do you remember which direction the lid was on that? No, but I'll figure that out. Okay. <laughs> I think the lid was up. There we go. Just slide that off. And so it's not going to pull that magnet out of the hole while it is, uh, while the glue's drying. So we're dropping it in. Down. Mm-hmm. little accelerator. I know we're not supposed to, but I love the way that smells. <laughs> oh, you're really not supposed to. <laughs> I think the more, unfortunately, the more brain cells you lose, the better it smells. Mm, that's a, definitely the way it goes. Okay, so I'm going to double check this. Yep. Okay. Silence on the floor. Perfect. That's a great fit. Wow, that's nice. Okay. Bam. There we go. Okay. What do you say? Moment of truth. Whoa! Hey -ho. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Let's fill that sucker up. We got Skittles over here. Right here. Where did I put those? Oh, you put them in the bin. Nice. All right. Oh, boy. I will... Uh... This is what we call the honors. Spilling the Skittles all over the set. Oh, Goose says show it to the camera. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There Not we go. bad. Not bad at all. Show that to the grandkids. A little bit of sawdust in your Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> Dirt never hurt. That's what my gramps always said. I like that. All right, let's give it a quick test. Show it to the camera. There we go. Yeah. Hey. Hey. There you go. We're not going to subject you to the sounds of us eating. Yeah, I really had to fight that <laughs> urge. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us on this three-part build. Yes. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for 100 sessions. Seriously. That's a lot. Um, That's super cool. Yeah. If you do happen to make this, uh, send it to us. Send us yeah. pictures at um, sessions at shapertools.com yeah, just so we can see it. Yeah, or if you're the Instagram type, at shapertools. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye.